I'm here alongside Emma Penny, sound supervisor extraordinaire, and Martha Watson, one of the many brilliant assistant producers that we've got working here at the Netball World Cup. Emma, first of all, sound supervisor, what exactly does that mean? Well, uh, what it means is I'm in charge of all the audio you hear on air and uh, also making sure that everyone around the OB can hear each other as well. So that's all the comms, people on radio, as well as all the stuff you hear going live to your telly. So you are the lady sat with all the buttons making sure every bit of sound gets where it needs to go. How did you become a sound supervisor? What's sort of the training and, and your background? Uh, so my background actually wasn't technical at all. Um, I did a literature degree. Um, I used to work in radio a lot as a journalist and uh, then went to TV working as an auto queue op. From there sort of trained up, sort of messing about on the sound desk. Um, became a supervisor that way. So what are the, I mean, there are, there are plenty of skills. I mean, very dexterous fingers are one of them because the sound <laughs> desk is absolutely huge. But what, what are the, the main skills you need? And what are those technical, the technical background, the technical knowledge that you have to have? I think that a lot of the job working in TV is actually being able to understand, understand what people want. Like it's being able to talk to producers, talk to clients. And when they say, we want to achieve this particular thing on air, you can translate it and go, OK, well, what that means from a sound point of view is I need to do this, this, this and this. Or when someone from BT comes to you and says, I need to record this particular source, you go, OK, cool, I'll make that available here, here, here and here. It's really a lot of talking to people. Um, <laughs> and those demands change all the time, don't they? Even when you're on air, those demands are changing all the time. So what's, yeah, yeah. what's set up to begin with and what you need when you're in the middle of a live mm. is quite different. Yeah, absolutely. For sure, yeah, you've got to be very adaptable. So Martha? You're an assistant producer, one of many, I will point out, that we've got working across this Netball World Cup. What are you guys doing? That's a really hard question because there's so much that we do. Um, so we do everything to assist the producer, which is uh, kind of in the name of it. Um, so it can be anything from getting footage to and from Sky um, here at the truck. Uh, Pre-show, we do things like edits, uh, getting things like openers and closers and all, all the interviews, all that kind of thing. We've got Greg, uh, who's also assisting on the production, who is doing some like interviews and stuff. Uh, gosh, what else do we do? We talk sound a lot. <laughs> um, gosh, what, replays, analysis. Analysis? Yeah, analysis we do all the time. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to, to talk about when it comes to assistant producing, uh, including social media, which we do a lot of. It's worth mentioning that Martha is the, the queen of social media here at Sky, Net, uh, Sky Netball. You've set up our Instagram account, especially for the World Cup. So on top of running replays, cutting teases, features, every piece of analysis that Tamsin Greenway wants, you're also somehow finding the time to post to Instagram. How is that going? Is the uptake being quite good? Always looking for more followers, so at Sky Netball is the handle. Uh, please do give us a follow. It's Yeah, it's great. It's like um, Emma says, it's a lot of communicating with different people, talking to people back at Sky, uh, getting the clips that you need for stuff. Um, yeah, there's a lot to it. How did you get into this role? Because I know you've got quite interesting mixed TV background, actually, coming into sport, haven't you? Yeah, so like Emma, um, my degree wasn't anything to do with TV or anything like that. It was actually in geography. Um, and then I did a lot of sport at university and back at school and ended up becoming a sports coach um, at another school uh, along with teaching and then I started doing some work on entertainment shows and realised that TV is where my heart really was and uh, yeah, ended up here somehow. It all adds up, it's all great experience. Um, I'm going to ask you both this question actually. Mm. Um, Martha, as someone with a geography degree, I'm sure this is something that you're all over, but there's a lot of travel when it comes <laughs> to working in TV, see what I did there? A uh, lot of travel, a lot of being away from home, how challenging is that and is that something that you enjoy about the job oh i love it yeah it's good the thing is when you're on an ob you're building everything from scratch completely so you've really got to think about every single detail and also like, it's not like suddenly you can be like oh if we're missing one of those let's pop over to the studio next door and get another one you've got to make it work which is yeah it's good yeah. martha one of the perks really sometimes of being an ap is that you're out of the office a lot aren't you so even in the preparation for the world cup it wasn't like you were just in the edit suite at sky you were out and about all the time what do you find challenging about that side of things or how much do you enjoy that i think it's great i think the great thing about where we are is that we have such a great number of people around us you know i think from cameramen to the other ap's to reporters to everyone around us is great fun and really helpful so being out on the road is actually quite nice because it means you get to spend more time with those people. Um, so it's something that I really enjoy and going out and meeting inspiring people um, who are doing inspiring things is fantastic. We actually all managed to escape last night to all go for a nice dinner together and it was so <laughs> yeah. lovely. Surprisingly, and I kind of sat back at one point and thought, oh, I don't know if this has been the situation before. It was all women it was, amongst yeah. 10 of us, I think. Emma, especially as someone working in what's traditionally a quite a male dominated technical yeah, yeah. element of TV. Have you ever found any challenges based on your gender or, or did you have to overcome anything in when you were starting out, especially? Oh, for sure. Even still, the amount of times I walk into a sound room and, and I, it might be very subtle, someone sort of at me and be like 
why are you here? What's, you know, what's your background? Like, well, you know, I, I deserve to be here just as much as you do, doing exactly the same job. So you often encounter that. I mean, as I've gone through, I meet a lot of people who've been very patient with their time and have helped me an awful lot. But you meet an equal number of people who perhaps aren't as patient, aren't as helpful, can try and be quite secretive with their information, um, which is something that I, I hope will change. Yeah, I think so. There's room for everyone, really, yeah, isn't there? Absolutely. Martha, absolutely. as someone that's come into sports broadcasting relatively recently, we heard from Leanne a bit earlier on saying that when she first started out, she really had to, you know, often quite prove that she loved sport or that she had the sporting knowledge. How have you found it? Because it's been a couple of years now, hasn't it, since you started with us at Sky? Yes, it's been two years since I started at Sky now, and I think I've been very lucky in that the sport that I really started and found, sunk my teeth into was the netball, um, and it's a team that is full of women. My producers. Uh, Leanne and Joe and my boss is Georgie who is head of multi-sport um, you're obviously one of our reporters Hannah so we're just full surrounded by really strong inspiring women and we're filming strong inspiring women so actually I find it brilliant being in TV and being in sport um, because you're around such people that are willing to help you and yeah it's just I feel I keep saying the word inspiring a lot but <laughs> every day I come into work and I feel so empowered and inspired by him working around and who I'm trying to oh, I don't know yeah just the, everyone's great I love it it's all very it's inspiring and fantastic and we love it and we're very lucky especially it's got to be said being here like you say around these fantastic athletes who juggle um, full-time jobs a lot of them as well one of the Trinidad yeah. and Tobago plays yeah. she's a CSI back at home um, you know investigating <laughs> murders and also bossing it on the netball court it's amazing um, final question for both of you because I know you're really busy we've got the small matter of England to South Africa this evening um, Emma Advice yeah. for young women wanting to get into TV in those technical roles, such yeah. as sound or you know, cameramen, camera persons, people as well. Because we say cameramen still automatically because it's just such yes. a male-dominated yeah, yeah, yeah. area. But it, they're opening up, aren't they? What's your advice for getting involved? Uh, my advice would be never be put off for the fact that it's nearly always a middle-aged man sat in that sound room <laughs> because yeah, at you guys. Yeah, it doesn't have to be. Um, and like, I didn't have a technical background, so don't be afraid of that either. Just ask questions, be helpful. Um, I think I got most of my knowledge literally just by like pestering people and asking questions all the time. So yeah, keep on doing that. Pestering people and asking questions is a way to get a way to get oh, on yeah, in life, sure, I think. Absolutely. Um, Martha, for you, what's your advice to young women starting out? Because I think as well now, with all the variety of platforms, there are loads of ways to get involved in broadcasting and, and sport and content creating. Yeah, I think it's really important to be passionate about what you want to do. And I think showing that passion and showing that, you know, you might not have the best technical ability to start off with, but that's something that you can learn. So I think showing that you have a passion for something and really showing that to people is something that's really beneficial. And I think with that, you can get anywhere that you want to go. You certainly can. You two are absolutely awesome doing a tremendous job here. It's got to be said. Where are we? Day seven. Everyone's still going strong. Everyone's still smiling. Yay. Yes, we're still <laughs> smiling here. Um, and yeah, thanks very much. Back to you, Amanda.